You are now listening to episode 25 of the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In this episode, Dr. Taylor covers how to build a bulletproof immune system part two. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. So top 10 action steps to build a bulletproof immune system. This is really what you guys came for. What can I, com- what can I leave here today and do to make sure that my immune system is gonna be better than it was yesterday, better than it was the day before, and continue to get stronger moving forward every day, every year, every month, continuing through the rest of your life. So, what are the top 10 steps for a bulletproof immune system? We're gonna go through each of them, but I purposely didn't put them on your handout so that you can't just come and get the handout and leave. So you gotta write them in there. So number one, get a good night's sleep. Number two, avoid sugar. Number three, juice. Number four, exercise. Number five, take the right supplements. Number six, use spices and herbs. Number seven, eat an immune-boosting diet. Number eight, actively manage your stress. Number nine, get the lymph moving. And number 10, get adjusted. So if you're scrambling to get those written down, we're gonna go through each of them. So as we go, you'll have a chance to get those. But number one, get a good night's sleep. Before I go into this, one of the things that I wanna mention, because you know a lot of you have been to several of our workshops, or you've listened to the podcast, and you start to listen to things like weight loss, detox, immune system, stress management, and really it all comes down to doing the same things. A lot of this, you're gonna, you heard this at the stress management talk if you were there, because getting a good night's sleep adds to your, or getting a bad night's sleep, adds to your stress, which adds to your body's ability, or like inability to detoxify properly, which decreases your immune function. So all these things are related. Things that are gonna boost your immune system are also gonna be the foods that are gonna boost your body's ability to detox, because they're just the things that are really good for you. Does that make sense? Same with exercise. Can anybody name something that exercise is not good for? It's good for everything. (laughs) So that's what a lot of these things are, a lot of the same things. Dr. Wenner. What do I think about them? I think they're good. We're gonna talk about it with the supplements. One of the things that I'm gonna mention is a lot of those roots, he asked what about natural supplements, like things like valerian root has a calming effect. Um, A lot of them are really good, but a lot of the things like valerian root, ginkgo biloba, some things like that, you, got, you want to be really careful, because you guys might have seen, you know, we posted something about, I don't know, maybe six months ago now, but they did a study, at, uh, they tested supplements from GNC, from Walgreens, from Walmart, and I forget what the fourth one was, uh, but another big, you know, big retailer, and what they found was that they only matched, the DNA only matched what was on the label 21% of the time. 21% of the time is how often the supplements, what you think you're taking, what you were actually taking. So maybe valerian root is great for you, but maybe what you're taking isn't actually valerian root. So you just want to be careful when it comes to the quality of something like that. Holly? I personally found that if I do those other things, then the good night sleep happens on itself. That's a good point, too. Yeah, that's an awesome point. She said that, she found, she's found that when she does these other things, the good night sleep happens on its own, right? So this could be a sleep workshop and we could be giving you the nine steps for a bulletproof sleep cycle. It's all the next nine. Uh, that's what I'm saying is that all these things, they're just good for you. And when you, when you treat your body, that's the theme of what we do in the office. When you treat your body the way that it was designed, you're gonna get healthier. Things are gonna work the way they're supposed to. When you treat your body the way that it was not designed, you work against that design, it continues to get sicker and sicker and sicker. So getting a good night's sleep is crucial. This, is, this goes back a really long time that they've known that there's an association with a healthy circadian rhythm and your immune system, okay? And this even goes as far as like when patients are in the hospital, especially septic patients or patients in ICUs, there are times of the night where they are more likely to die. 
significantly more likely. It's in the middle of the night, but circadian rhythms get thrown off with long-term hospital stays because you're getting interrupted with lights and with people checking your vitals and things like that, and your circadian rhythms get off. Another thing is like, uh, you know, we have a lot of shift workers or swing shift workers that work all nights or work all days or that alternate between the two, and it's incredibly harmful on your immune system, on your body's circadian rhythm, which also affects your adrenals, and really everything in your body systemically is gonna just start getting worse and worse and worse if you consistently get a bad night's sleep. So people who wake up in their first sleep cycles have a lower level of natural killer cells, and then there's one hormone that's related to sleep, and that's melatonin. And melatonin, you know, you could take that supplementally, you could take it you know, to, to help your body sleep, but it's something that your body produces naturally, and it's called the darkness hormone. So one thing you wanna to do to get a good night's sleep is you wanna be in complete darkness right before you go to sleep. That's gonna increase your body's production of melatonin. Even something as simple as looking at your phone or flipping on a lamp can shut down melatonin, okay? So you wanna be in complete darkness right before you go to sleep. You don't want to have a TV or anything stimulatory in your room because not only does that decrease melatonin production, it stimulates your brain, it gets your brain going right before you go to bed. So you should have a half hour to an hour no technology rule before you go to bed. A few other things that you can do to get a good night's sleep. Uh, you actually, it's better to sleep in a cold environment. In cave-like darkness is what they say. Another thing that you can do is, like Holly said, all the other healthy things like exercise, regular exercise, gonna stimulate your body's ability to get a good night's sleep. Another thing you can do is like right before sleep, do something like a calming meditation. We've done, a few of the, the staff members and myself, we'll use guided meditations and fall asleep to them with headphones or with them just playing. And I told my staff, I said, I have this guided meditation, it's 30 minutes long, it's just a woman talking to you to sleep basically. I've never heard the end of it. I've never heard the end of it because I always fall asleep every single time when I try to use it for sleep. So there's a lot of things you can do to help your body get a better night's sleep. Number two, avoid sugar. If you've ever heard me talk about anything, you've heard me say this, right? Because there's nothing that sugar doesn't cause. And this is not my information anymore. It's everywhere, okay? This is, this is mainstream medical information nowadays. This is mainstream media, which a lot of this stuff, you know, you'll hear it from an alternative provider. Then a couple years later, it'll become mainstream media. We'll get a news story. And then a couple years later, it'll become mainstream medical protocol. Like we're going to talk about vitamin D. I remember when vitamin D was just first coming out, you hardly ever heard of it. Now I have patients bringing me their vitamin D tests from their general practitioner, their GP, and they're, they're encouraging them to get these tests because they know it's one of the most important tests that anybody can have for their overall health. But decreasing sugar. Sugar can actually, has, they've proven that when you eat sugar, it shuts down your immune system right away. It shuts down things long term. It fuels cancer cells. They've actually shown for, for as far back as the 1920s, somebody won a Nobel Prize for this in the 1920s for proving that cancer cells had up to eight times the sugar receptors on the outside of their cells than a normal cell does. So sugar actually fuels cancer. And when they check you for cancer, they're gonna do what's called a PET scan. And when they do a PET scan, they'll have you drink radioactive sugar. The sugar goes right to the tumor. Then when they do the scan, they can find out where the tumor is. That's how a PET scan works because sugar fuels cancer, so you want to decrease your sugar. Sugar also fuels other things that are inflammatory or, or that are immune related like inflammation. Sugar fuels your inflammatory response. And we're talking chronic inflammation now. I'm not talking about when you get a scratch like we talked about before. I'm talking about chronic inflammation. Sugar is going to keep fueling that. It also is going to feed candida, which is a yeast overgrowth in your gut and other gut flora imbalances. So when we talk about the good gut bacteria, that actually competes with the bad bacteria and keep, keeps it out. When you have a lot of good bacteria, there's no room for the bad. That's why something like a probiotic is so crucial because it gets good bacteria into your gut, doesn't allow the bad stuff to take hold. But candida is an example of bad stuff that can take hold and it can overgrow, and it can cause immune dysfunctions and cause disease. So that's one of the reasons, one of the many, many reasons why you want to decrease 
your sugar intake. Another thing that I'll just throw out there with sugar I was just listening to last night is your body, when it ages, when it ages, sugar speeds that up. Okay, so that's called glycation. That's how your discs degenerate. That's also how your skin forms wrinkles in it. It's glycation. That's all you really need to know is that's what the process is called. Well, high fructose corn syrup, they've found glycates up to 30 times the rate of normal sugar, of even table sugar. So it glycates, it literally ages your body faster by eating these crappy sugars like high fructose corn syrup. So you wanna cut out the sugars, and it doesn't mean start using artificial sweeteners either. Uh, it means just cut out the sugars and cut out the sweet stuff. And, and a lot of you guys have you know, been to the recipe nights. You know, we're gonna have a recipe night next week. It's advanced Thanksgiving. You know that you can eat without sugar, and it's still delicious. Some of us are addicted, some of us have cravings, some of us have to break through that, just like if we smoke two packs a day and we wanna quit. Uh, but you can eat delicious without sugar. In December, we're gonna do our, our uh, recipe night that has all desserts. It's all desserts, it's all candies and things, and none of it has any sugar. And it's awesome, it's really, really good, so you don't need sugar in everything. Number three action step is juicing. Okay, so juicing, there's not really a direct link like you're gonna drink this juice, your immune system is gonna function stronger, but it's one of those things that's it's going to help everything. And it's one of the things that if I ever get sniffles, uh, you know, cough, or start to come down with some symptoms, I don't know that it necessarily helps, but I, I'm like you guys, when I come down with something like that, I, I do everything that I can to get rid of it. I try to do everything before it happens, preventatively, but when, when I do start getting a symptom, first thing I'll do is always make a juice. Okay, what am I gonna put in that juice? Some citrus vegetables. You know, we've heard of vitamin C being good for the immune system. Citrus vegetables, or citrus fruits, excuse me. Citrus fruits, but fruits are dangerous because they are high in sugar. So I don't do a ton of fruits, but something to add to a juice, a lemon, a lime, something that really spices up the flavor, a Granny Smith apple. I'll almost always have one of those in all of my juices because it makes it taste so much better. The other thing that I always add, especially when it comes to immune boosting, and we're gonna talk about it in a minute, but garlic root and turmeric root. I put both of those in the juice. It's one of my favorite things. I, or not garlic, excuse me, ginger. I don't know if garlic would be good. <laughs> <laughs> nobody caught that, so nobody was like, ew, that doesn't sound very good. You just took my word for it. You're going to go home and make some garlic juice. Uh, but ginger, ginger into the juice, one of the things that's absolutely uh, necessary. And so one of the reasons that juicing is great, it's a nutrient expressed right into your cells. Your digestive system doesn't have to do any work to break down the fiber that's associated with the juice. Now this is, I'm talking fresh juicing, where I'm taking the, the vegetable and the fruit and I'm making the juice right there. I'm not telling you go home and that juicing is great, go out and get your kids grape juice and get your kids cranberry juice and, and juice, juice, juice for your kids. For the most part, when you separate the fiber from the juice, the sugar, you know, you're getting a lot of sugar without the fiber. Fiber is technically a good thing, but because when you're sick, because when you're under the weather, you're expressing a symptom, you wanna get as many nutrients as you can as possible. You wanna fight that as strong as possible. That's a time when I will always do a juice. You can do things like juice fasts or juice cleanses. We just had a patient finish a 30 day, and he looks great. I literally didn't recognize him. I thought he was like a cop. He looks all big and, and before he just, he didn't. Um, but you can do a three day juice fast. That's a great way. It gives your digestive system a break and just gets the good in without having your digestive system having to break down any fiber. That's why juicing can be so good because you know, if you picture, if you've ever seen you know, what goes into a juice, I could never really eat that in a day or it'd be a tough, you know, salad, 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 salad. But in one juice, you might get you know, two heads of celery and a bunch of broccoli and a bunch of kale and a bunch of, you know, a whole lemon and a Granny Smith apple and the ginger and, and the garlic if you want. Uh, but now you're gonna get all these things and it's hard to eat that in your normal diet. So juicing, you can get a lot more nutrients in a lot less time. Number four, exercise. This is one that we're not gonna spend a lot of time on because exercise literally helps everything everything, and this is the way the body was designed. This isn't like, oh my gosh, exercise, this late-breaking technology, you need to go out and you need to do this type of exercise. This is the way that people have been living 
since the beginning of time. Their bodies are designed to move. It's only more recently that we sit, right? Our bodies were always moving. Picture, you know, just 150 years ago, you're always gonna be working. You ever watch a show like uh, where they're homesteaders or something and they live the way that you know, people used to live 150 years ago? They're never sitting. They're never sitting. They're exercising and they're moving. And for the last thousands of years, that's what everybody did. It's only been for the last hundred years that we've started sitting and stopped moving so much. And I'm not talking about walking. Walking is not exercise. Walking is walking. Walking is just getting from one place to another. Exercise is elevating your heart rate and actually getting exercise, getting your heart rate, getting your lungs pumping harder. Walking is just something that is, is maintenance. That's maintaining health. Exercise is going above and beyond that. Number five, take the right supplement. So this is, you know, one of the most controversial topics, and not controversial uh, in the way that is it good or is it bad, but what should I be taking, right? Because marketing is going to tell you one thing, and science and research is gonna tell you another thing. So here's what we have out there. Airborne, uh, emergency, and I'm not knocking either of those two necessarily, but you're gonna get a lot of products like that that I don't know that they're gonna necessarily do anything. Literally, I mean, not do anything. But what we take, we take them, you know, I bet that if you took an airborne or, a, or, a, or an immune, uh, or an emergency, and say your cold lasted five days, I bet if you didn't take it, it would probably last five days. Now, is vitamin C good for you? Is some of the stuff that's in there good for you? Absolutely. But is there junk in there? You better believe it. I guarantee it. I don't know what. I don't have the back of the label, but I'm sure there are colorings. I'm sure there are additives. And I'm sure that even the supplements, even the vitamins that they aren't using, aren't coming from the best sources. So supplements, if you heard me say it once, you've heard it a thousand times, you have to buy high quality supplements. That's incredibly, incredibly important. And are they a few dollars more expensive? Yeah. But is it worth it? Yeah, absolutely. So vitamin C, I put a question mark by that because that is the most, probably the most common one, right? You, you hear somebody get sick and they say, oh, you, are you bumping up your vitamin C? Yeah, I just, I went and got a gallon of orange juice and I've been eating oranges all day. And, you know, they're doing the things that they think are, are right, but the orange juice has been pasteurized. And any heat, destroys vitamin C. Chocolate, cacao, is actually one of the highest vitamin C containing plant, or foods on the planet. But when you heat it and you turn it into a chocolate bar, it kills all the vitamin C. So vitamin C is killed in anything that's been pasteurized. So that's the first thing that you need to know. But vitamin C, the research actually does show that it does boost your immune system. There's research that shows that it decreases upper respiratory and lower respiratory tract symptoms in number of days and that it can increase some of the, the markers or some of the, you know, the soldiers that we talked about earlier, some of the white blood cells that help your body fight disease. So I'd say that a lot that's out there about vitamin C is pure hype, but there is some legitimacy to it. And so that is one of the supplements that we have up here that, that I would recommend. And so if you want to avoid colds, you want to avoid flus, things like that, we've got some supplements that we're gonna recommend. Vitamin C is one of them right here. It's this orange one. The next one that I would recommend is a zinc. Vitamin C and zinc, the two, two of the three most well-researched supplements when it comes to boosting your immune system. Zinc is a cofactor in a lot of different reactions in your body. Zinc, magnesium, CoQ10. These are, these are supplements, they call them cell-loving supplements. Your cells love them. They're great for producing the right amount of energy. They're great for keeping your cell walls intact. So zinc is a huge one. Magnesium is another one. Now we were gonna start carrying a magnesium product, but the reason that we didn't is because in, in the ABBA set apart remedies back there, there's magnesium. Tara, is there magnesium in every single product? The medicinal balm. The, the medicinal balm. So four of the products have topical magnesium. And the what? And the deodorant. And the deodorant as well. So magnesium, when you eat gene uh, a diet high in processed foods and genetically modified foods, it actually robs your body of magnesium. A lot of experts today think that magnesium is the number one mineral deficiency that we have. Uh, and so uh, we were gonna carry a new product, but HERS has it in there. It's an awesome, 
awesome skincare products. If you guys haven't checked that out yet, make sure that you do, but you can get your magnesium through that. Magnesium deficiencies can cause a lot of things, but really highly implicated in headaches and in migraines, so magnesium. And then the last one, you know, essential oils. A lot of people use essential oils for a lot of different things, especially here in Utah, but some of the oils have incredibly powerful immune-boosting properties. And they even use these now, you know, in cancer therapy and cancer treatment and in recovery. You know, a lot of uh, doctors will put them in, in a patient's gas mask as they're coming out of anesthesiology. Or they use frankincense now for brain tumors because they know it could cross the blood-brain barrier and actually kill cancer cells. Frankincense can. So frankincense, another big one is oregano oil, natural, antiviral, um, great for like ear infections. Yeah, I, I, you gotta be careful with it. I don't know the exact, what you need to do, but you need to put it in a carrier oil because oregano oil is so strong it can burn your skin. So you don't wanna just go dropping it in a, you know, your baby's ears if they have an ear infection. But that's one of the things that it can be really good for is diluted oregano oil can knock out an ear infection. Thieves oil, uh, and then On Guard is you know, doTERRA's version of an immune booster. So you can do you know, On Guard oil. Um, I do On Guard toothpaste. They have On Guard beadlets now. I think they might have On Guard gum. They've got different ways to get this. And some of those options, you know, as compared to an oil, I like them better because they get to the back of your throat. You know, I don't like to drip or drink On Guard, but when you eat a beadlet or you do the toothpaste or you do a, a, something like that that has On Guard in it, it gets right to the back of your throat, which is usually where you're, you're feeling it or what you take On Guard for. You're starting to get a cold. You're starting to get sniffles. You're starting to get a sore throat. That's what it would be for. So a lot of supplements. There. The other ones that I want to talk about before we move on to the next slide. Oop. Probiotics. Okay, so you've heard me talk about it uh, earlier when we were talking about the gut bacteria and the initial lining. And a lot of you have heard me talk about it before. It's one of the most important things that I think that every single person should be on, literally every single person. Uh, I want to thank Denise for, for pointing this one out to me. This one, Prescriptacyst, as soon as I started reading about it and researching it and, and looking into it, this is by far the best on the market. And a lot of other uh, experts have confirmed that. I'll see it on their website or I'll see it, you know, I read about it in a book recently called The Autoimmune Solution where she, she recommends this one by name. So Prescriptacyst, this is the best probiotic that you can get hands down, bar none. Now this is, uh, they estimate that this, it has 29 strains of bacteria. And what you'll find when you look at strength of probiotics is that, you know, 50 billion or 85 billion might be a good strength. That is a good strength for a probiotic. You eat fermented foods, they found that in one bite, you're in the trillions. Okay, so fermented foods are really, really high in these, for, in these probiotics. You're gonna get them from, from fermented foods. Kombucha too, kombucha too. Kombucha is a little bit lower though than fermented foods and it's also usually has some sugar content. But yeah, kombucha is something that I do as a maintenance thing. Yeah, and you guys make your own, so you can change it, and you, it's not like buying it off the shelf, so that's awesome. And the flavor, it kind of is a substitute for the kids make once Oh, nice. That's what you use for, for juice and things. So Phyllis, by the way, if you don't mind me just calling this out, Phyllis has some experience in giving kids healthy foods. They fostered over 70 kids. How was it, uh, 72, 74? Yeah, so, so she's had some kids in, in her life come through her house, right? So she's saying that instead of juice, they make their own kombucha, and they do have different flavors, and the kids love it, and it's good for them. I think that's awesome. Another one up here. Okay, so those are the three that I want to talk about right now. Vitamin C, zinc, and prescript assist. The probiotic, the most important supplement. Vicky? What's the oil? What's the what? What's thieves' oil? Is that like Young Living's version of On Guard? That's what I thought. Well, I was researching it and that's what it seemed like. It's Young, you know, Young Living and doTERRA are the two biggest companies worldwide and here. They're both headquartered here. That's their version of On Guard. So it's two different versions of, of a similar immune boosting thing. Oh, nice, yeah. Nice. Right in the back of your throat or right in your tongue. 
Nice. Yeah, so thieves, you know, we, we have doTERRA. A lot of people use Young Living. They're, in my opinion, they're very, 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 very comparable. Um, but thieves oil, she's saying it has a spray that you can spray orally and get it right into your mouth that way. Um, and then the, we're talking about some of the on-guard products. So those are some of the things you can do essential oil-wise. But there's, number, there's one supplement. One supplement. This is the most important thing for the immune system. This is the most important thing you're going to hear me say all day. Uh, there's one thing, and it's more important than chiropractic if you ever, you've never heard me say that before. <laughs> Vitamin D3. Okay, so when you look at the number one things when it comes to your immune system, this is what will keep popping up, is that if you are vitamin D deficient, you are more likely to come down with a cold, to come down with the flu. You're also more likely to develop cancer. I'm gonna show you a chart in a second. It's gonna show all the things that you're more likely to develop when your levels of vitamin D aren't high enough. And one of the reasons it's an amazing antimicrobial, it actually produces 200 to 300 different peptides, different antimicrobial peptides in your body that can kill off bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Okay, it's incredibly, incredibly powerful. You make it from the sun, right? That's the best way that your body makes it. You can get a little bit dietarily, but you can get a lot from the sun, and you can take it supplementally. But here's what they've found, especially in a place like Utah. You know, we're covered up. Even me, that I'm out in the sun pretty often because I ski so much, but this is the only area of my face getting sun, so it's not a lot of sun exposure, even if you're outside in the winter. So what they found when they measure people is the late winter average is only about 15 to 18 nanograms per milliliter. Is there anybody in here that's been tested for vitamin D? Is there anybody in here that'd be willing to share their number? Anybody? Shout it out if anybody remembers. Do you remember? I was an eight. You were an eight. She, she said I was the second she had ever seen. Wow. And what did, uh, what did they recommend for that? So I like doubled up on a dose. Um, and for about three months, we got tested again. And it went back up to about 80. 80? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. So she was an eight, and her and her husband were both really, really low. And was this your, your GP, your general practitioner that's doing this? Yeah, she was kind of like a, I don't want to say a specialist. She's just a general practitioner. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so kind of like functional medicine. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what, what we focus on. So yeah, so this is, this is not alternative anymore. This is what you're going to get at the hospital. This is what, you know, the only time we've been to the pediatrician is when they said bye when we left the hospital. And they said, do you take a vitamin D and do your babies take a probiotic? And I said, man, I love you. You're an awesome pediatrician. Th those are the two things that I would tell somebody that they need to take as well. So this is not alternative anymore. Vitamin D is mainstream medical Treatment. Now, what's still alternative is the levels, what they recommend that you be at. So like for kids, they recommend that kids get 400 IUs a day. That's really, really low. What's recommended for adults to prevent disease is actually to be up in 5,000 to 10,000 IUs per day. So the late winter average is only 15 to 18, which is really low. Melissa said that she was at an eight, so she was almost off the charts, second lowest the doctor had ever seen there. Uh, and it's estimated that over 85% of our population are severely deficient, with over 95% of senior citizens. And they've done, they've done, there's five studies, five or six total, I think, that have shown vitamin D levels across a population and proven that you're more likely to get colds, fevers, flus, sickness, immune dysfunction when your vitamin D levels are low. But in the biggest one, they studied over 19,000. Americans. It's one of the largest studies to actually represent our country. And what they found in that was that those that reported the, or those that had the, the lowest levels of vitamin D had the most recent colds or cases of the flus, and the risk was greater for asthma, and they had a longer duration for these things too. So not only had they had one more recently, but they had it for longer when their vitamin D levels were low. So this is the number one thing, this is the number one medical test that anybody can have, in my opinion after an x-ray of their spine. X-ray of the spine, vitamin D test, and fatty acid ratios, three most important health tests anybody can have. 
This is a chart. So this chart, I'll just show you on this axis, are the vitamin D levels. So Melissa said she was an eight. She's over down here. So you're not even, that's like rickets level. This is, these are diseases, cancers, all cancers combined, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, colon cancer, type one diabetes, multiple sclerosis, heart attack, all diseases here. So along this level is where, if we were in these levels, so if all of America was in the 40 to 60 level, we would prevent X number, 77% of all cancers. They estimate that if all Americans got their vitamin D levels up into the, the appropriate range, cancer diagnosis within a year would fall by 50%. 77% of people would prevent cancer. Now right below that, breast cancer. Now so this is saying that if you're at 32, you, you're, you're preventing 30, or we would prevent 30% of all breast cancer cases. If everybody was at 50, we'd prevent 83% of breast cancer cases. This is crazy. Type 1 diabetes, if we're at 34, we're gonna prevent 25% of type 1 diabetes. If we're at, six, if we're at 54, we're gonna prevent 65% of it. So all these diseases, they've compiled all this research to show that when your vitamin D levels are high enough, you're going to prevent disease. So that is the most important thing from a supplemental standpoint is to keep your vitamin D levels high. So you can supplement with those, but you have to know, you have to know if you're deficient. And the only way that you can know is by testing. And this next part, that is actually, uh, that is correct. The ideal range for adults for health maintenance is 50 to 70. And so Melissa said that when she was done, she got to 80. So she's on the high end there. That's really, really good. Uh, this is not correct. That was actually, they measure it in, in a different measurement. So it's not 50, they actually recommend lower. But we do this testing in the office. Uh, it's normally, we normally charge $150. You do it at home, we don't do blood draws in the office. But this week only, we're gonna do it for 20% off. So if anybody wants to know what your vitamin D levels are, what your baseline levels are at the start of the winter, to know that you know, before you start hunkering down and staying out of the sun, know that your levels need to be raised if you want to avoid cold, flu, fever this year. Get tested this week only, $120. That is pretty inexpensive for a lab test. I just looked this morning, you can get online vitamin D tests for a little bit cheaper than that. I don't know how, how well, how good quality is. And you're not gonna get the, the consultation with us that you're gonna get at our office. So find out where your levels are at and see if you need to be higher or if maybe you're good to go on that. Once you know that, the other thing, the last thing I wanna talk about with these supplements is what we're gonna do today is for these supplements, they are on sale. So I'm gonna read you the prices and, and what the packages are that are available. What we did is we made up a, a package to take for the whole winter if you really want to avoid getting a cold, getting a flu, getting a fever this year. And so what it is, is it's a vitamin D, a vitamin C, zinc, and the probiotic. Four things. You can buy any of them individually, uh, of course, but what it is, so vitamin C is typically $20. Vitamin D, $26.99. The probiotic, $49.99. And zinc, $14.99. If you get all four of them together, so that's $112 for all four of those. If you get all four of them together, it comes down to $100. But if you want to prepay to get a 90-day supply of these, so then a month you're gonna get your next supply and then the next month you'll get your next supply, last you through the winter. If you wanna prepay to get a 90-day supply of your immune-boosting supplements, it's only $88 a month. So originally 112 down to 88, $24 off by saying right now that you want to buy these supplements at a time. What it looks like, the total is 336 to 264, so it's like 70, you're gonna save 70 bucks in the long run by, by getting these supplements today. So that's the last thing on supplements, but very important thing. The next one, use spices and herbs. A lot of these spices and herbs are gonna be flavorful, and the things that provide your food with a lot of flavor really, really good for your body, really, really good for boosting your immune system, really, really good for stimulating your detoxification. So the number one is turmeric. Turmeric, there are, the studies keep coming out literally by the dozens of everything that turmeric can do to decrease inflammation, to increase your body's ability to fight off 
invaders. Turmeric is the number one spice and herb. It has the, the main component is called curcumin. So you can get this from other things too, but curcumin is really what does it. And so this is something that, like I said before, I juice it. You can get turmeric root at the store. Now when you look at it, it's, it's like $9.99 a pound, which is pretty expensive, but you just get a little bit. You just get a little bit and you throw it in your juicer and that's going to be an awesome spice and flavor to your juice. But you can also get the spice and start adding it to your foods. And I would encourage you to start experimenting with your spices and start using just more of them in general. They all have really good anti-cancer and immune boosting effects. But turmeric's number one. Uh, ginseng is number two. You know, that's, that can be an herb, but it can also be a supplement. Um, garlic, that's the other one. You do want to crush garlic. Uh, you want to crush garlic. Same thing with ginger, you want to crush ginger. You don't want to eat it whole. Uh, you want it to be crushed or at least grated when it's on your food. But both of, both of those, garlic and ginger, great for boosting the immune system, great for stimulating detox. They both have anti-spasmodic effects on your digestive system so they can decrease spasms. Erica? Oh. That's a good, a good thing to know. I had no idea. She said when you're using it, cooking with it or drinking with the garlic or ginger, you want to add it towards the end, cooking with it, I think you said, because it'll burn. So you want to add it towards the end because it'll burn quickly and easily. And that's what I'd say with a lot of these spices is add them, towards, add them at the end. They don't, the heat does not help most things. So you want to cook most things as little as possible, like a raw vegetable or raw fruit. But add a lot of the flavorings at the end. Ginger, how about echinacea? and ginkgo biloba, those actually are, fall into more some of the natural supplements, like a valerian root, um, but a lot of them are spices and just different herbs that can either be used in cooking or can be taken supplementally to boost it. Eat and, oh, another thing that I'll say about garlic, just real quick, is that um, garlic pills don't work because the, you have to take it, the, the, the active ingredient in it, it's, it's dead within an hour, they say. So like a gar and that's also why you want to smash it or you want to run it through your juice grater. Even garlic, even if you just take a spoon and smash it, that activates the active ingredient. But the pills don't work. So some people know that garlic is good for them and they, they don't want the taste or they don't want the breath. So they're taking the pills. Not working the same. Uh, so not a, not a good alternative. Yeah. I have the recipe for garlic, for pickled garlic. You do? Pickled garlic? Mm, that sounds good. Number seven, eat an immune-boosting diet. And now uh, a lot of people might be saying, well, you're going to tell me what I can go home and eat for lunch today, right? But no, it's not going to be a specific food. There's no, I'm not going to give you a specific food like broccoli increases white blood cells or blah, blah, blah. I'm going to give you some general rules of thumb because an immune-boosting diet is also a detoxing diet, is also a fat-burning diet, is also an everything, a cancer-preventing diet. It's an everything diet. So some of these rules, if you're living by these rules, it's going to make a big difference. Number one, eat real food. Eat real food. That is the first one. Eat food by God instead of food by man. Eat foods that grew on a plant instead of foods that were made in a plant. If you're eating foods with any genetically modified ingredients, you're decreasing your immune system and decreasing your body's innate health potential because that is not natural. Uh, number two, eliminate sugar. We already talked about that, but these are just the five general guidelines for dietary. Uh, eat real food, eliminate sugar, increase your good fats. So increase your good fats is things like avocados, olives, olive oil, coconut products is probably the biggest way to get good fats. Animal products, clean animal products. I love that the... Uh, the remedies back there are all made with tallow, which is animal fat, but it's all, the, the most important thing is that they're all grass-fed, grass-finished. So the animal fat actually has the proper ratio of good fat to bad fat. That's something that you want to increase. Help your body become a fat burner, but also help your cells be healthier because your cell linings are all made from good fats. You can go back to and listen to past podcast episodes where we talked for 30 minutes straight, 45 minutes straight, on fats. What are good fats? What do they do? What do they do for you? Where can I get them? All the examples there. Number four, eat bright colors and strong flavors. This is uh, incredibly important. Eat all the colors of the rainbow. That's the basis between, behind functional nutrition and functional medicine, as they say. Every single day, you should eat all the colors of the rainbow. 
And so we've got next door, we've got checklists of different foods that you can eat that are red, that are orange, that are yellow. We've got checklists for adults, we've got checklists for kids. So go and look at the different samples or different examples of things that you can eat to be eating foods of the rainbow, every, every single color of the rainbow, not just green, but all the whole variety. And then, you know, the strong flavors. Strong flavors, these are things like phytonutrients that create the colors and things like flavanols that create the flavors and they're very, very good for your immune system, very, very good for your detoxing. And then number five, eliminate any toxins or additives. This is artificial sweeteners, artificial um, you know, preservatives, um, MSG, anything like that that's artificial, colorings, get rid of them. And then you know, eat any vegetables, they're great for your immune system. You know, let's just eat the real food. Greens, ginger, garlic, citrus, lemons, limes, vitamin C, good for detox, good for immune system. So a lot of the things that we've already talked about there. Number eight, massively important. We got three more. How many more? Three. Okay, so some people are awake. Good. Okay, so actively manage your stress. Okay, I put that on there for a very specific reason. Because a lot of people say, well, yeah, I'm managing my stress. Well, what are you doing for it? Nothing. Thinking about it. Like, I know that it's there. So I, you know, I take a vacation every six months. Or, you know, actively managing your stress means manage your stress daily. Manage your stress daily daily. And look, and, you know, we always talk about looking for the cause. But with stress, we always joke that you know, the cause might be your job, the cause might be your boss, the cause might be your spouse. We can't help you get rid of the cause. We can help you get rid of the effects, though. So these are things like meditation. This is something that should be done daily. Now there's prayer, too. Now the difference for me is prayer is a conversation, and, and you're engaged in it. Meditation is the exact opposite. You want nothing. You want to be thinking about nothing. And so you want to give your brain a minute to relax and you want to unplug it. Okay, so that's the difference there. But both massively, massively important to manage your body's stress. And stress has long been known to immediately decrease the immune system. That's why people with stressful lifestyles, much higher risk of heart disease, much higher risk of cancer because stress decreases immunity. So those have healthy relationships. This is one of the most overlooked components of stress management. And when they've studied, you know, there's a documentary called Happy about what makes people happy. When they've studied people, they found that that's the number one thing. Is they've got a supportive relationships around them. They've got supportive friends, supportive family, and they have healthy relationships. That's incredibly important for your stress management. Unplug from technology. That's one that a lot of people don't like to hear. But technology is stimulatory, it increases your stress hormones, and it also, you know, a lot of times it's just not serving us really any purpose. Um, so like Facebook, you know, the things that we can waste hours of our life doing, watching TV, they serve us absolutely no purpose, and they actually, you know, are increasing your stress levels oftentimes without you even knowing it. Now one of the things that I'll say is I always prescribe people this for stress, kind of as a joke, but I say go home and watch a comedy, because one of the things that metabolizes or breaks down stress hormones is laughter. So that's one of the ways that you can use technology. The other thing, you know, I use technology, like I said, I have a meditation app. I have a Bible app and a prayer app. And like, you can use technology for all these things, or you can unplug either way, but you gotta find a way to actively manage your stress every single day. Practice deep breathing, that's another hugely important one. Breathe from the diaphragm. When you're breathing from the diaphragm and deep breathing, your body can't physically be stressed. And then the last one, you know, with Thanksgiving, be grateful. The last couple of years we've done a workshop called Max Thanks, where we went into the science behind being grateful, the science behind gratitude and how that actually affects your health, and it does massively. So be grateful. We're incredibly, incredibly fortunate for what we have. Uh, so be thankful for it no matter where you're at in your life. Be grateful. Be thankful. It's actually going to boost your immune system. Number nine, get the lymph moving. Okay, two more. We're going to wrap up with these big two, but these are big two. Okay, get the lymph moving. So we talked about your lymph system, 500 to 700 nodes, really important for flushing out toxins, but how does it move? It doesn't have a pump. Your blood system, your circulatory system has a pump, right? The heart pumps blood, so it's moving all the time. It's moving fast, and it's constantly moving. Your lymph system does not have a pump, so you have to move it. 
it moves through muscular contractions. So that's one of the reasons why you need to be moving at all times, why you need to be exercising, not sedentary, not sitting. That's why they say that sitting is the new smoking because it affects every area of your body systemically. This is one of the reasons why. So exercise, another one is hot and cold hydrotherapy. And that might sound like something that you have to go pay for at a spa, but it's not. This is something that I do almost every day. It is, I don't know how to describe it because it's kind of miserable, but it's kind of awesome. <laughs> you alternate your shower between really hot and really cold. And the first time I did it is miserable, right? It's like, why would anybody want to do that? Uh, but you kind of get addicted to it. But you alternate between hot and cold. And what the cold does is it contracts your lymph system and then the heat expands it. And so that can actually stimulate lymph flow. I heard of this from, from Jordan Rubin. Many of you have heard the name Jordan Rubin. He's the founder of Garden of Life supplements. And this is something that he taught me was to just alternate your shower between hot and cold. And it is hydrotherapy. It does get the lymph moving. Another one is dry brushing. You can use a dry brush to actually stimulate lymph flow. And this, if you can see this, these are the arrows there's a direct or a, a specific direction that you want to dry brush so that you're moving lymph into these lymph nodes and they can take toxins and get rid of them and keep the immune system moving. So you want to brush towards the armpits. You want to brush towards the groin. You want to brush up the legs. You always want to do everything up the legs because your legs have valves that fight against gravity. So even if you're getting a massage, you never rub down the leg because it can damage the valves of your veins and of your lymph system. So you want to brush up the legs and get it into the, all the lymph nodes here in the groin. So dry brushing, really great for cellulite because what happens when the lymph system is stagnant is it's a lot of water retention. So that's one of the biggest reasons why we have a dry brush in our house is my wife likes to do it for cellulite, not for immune boosting reasons, but more so that she doesn't have cellulite. And that's a great motivating factor, but it's also keeping her healthy too. Dry brushing, the last one is rebounding. Has anybody ever done rebounding? Anybody know what it is? One person, okay, rebounding is amazing when you start to read about the research. This is what it is, bouncing on a trampoline. To me, that's called play. The carry, yeah. <laughs> so rebounding, what that does, the up and down movement stimulates lymph flow. That stimulates it actually about 20 to 30 times more than running or than sitting. And what they found here is it's as effective as 25 to 30 minutes of jogging for rebounding for 10 minutes. A lot of this is actually the same research and the same mechanisms by which whole body vibration is really good for you. Whole body vibe plates like we stand on some people after your adjustments. And one of the ways that they found out about re rebounding is the same way that they found out about whole body vibration is NASA was investigating how they can keep astronauts healthy. And what they found, because they lose bone mineral density, they lose muscle mass while they're in space and no gravity, and they found that rebounding actually restored all those things. Really good for getting the lymph moving, really not very impactful on your ankles, knees, and hips. You know, they found that when you're running, the g-force at your ankles and knees and hips is two to three times higher than it is up here. When you're rebounding, your whole body is experiencing the same gravitational force. So really, really good thing. I'd say that this is something that many people aren't doing that they could start doing, and it's an awesome, awesome thing to get your lymph moving, getting a little mini tramp or a rebounder. Number 10, last one, closing up with this, get adjusted, right? Get adjusted, getting adjusted has been shown for a long time to stimulate the immune system. Let me see, it, it, show of hands, how many people have found that since you started getting adjusted, you have been sick less often? Okay, so the overwhelming majority of the room, I'd say that a lot, some of the people that didn't raise their hands are people that just, just got started. They haven't been adjusted for very long. So the literature actually suggests that the nervous system plays a role in the modulation of the immune system. They, they, there's no difference between the nervous system and the immune system. They work together. It's the neuroimmunology. Then adjustments, the, the literature suggests that adjustments influence T and B lymphocytes, natural killer cells, antibody levels, phagocytes, that's Pac-Man activity, and plasma endorphin levels, which is your body's natural painkiller. So I'm going to show you with you three studies then we're going to be done here. So number one is a study with HIV AIDS in chiropractic. This was done in 1994. They did five patients 
uh, and five patients were adjusted and five were not. Okay, at six months, the CD4 levels, so we talked about that at the very beginning that it's a player in the adaptive immune response, but that's what they were measuring. The CD4 levels declined by 8% in the control group, but in the chiropractic group, they increased 48%. And now these are people with active HIV and AIDS boosting their immune system. Do you think that's gonna have a good impact on their health? Remember, HIV is an immunodeficiency. That is what, what HIV and AIDS is. That's what the ID in AIDS stands for, acquired immunodeficiencies. You know? So that is incredibly powerful study. Number two, the macrophages, the Pac-Man, right? So this study, uh, what they did is they took blood 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after the adjustment. You know, I've told a lot of you that they've done pre and post adjustment blood studies that show that it immediately boosts the immune system. This is one of those. Then they had other patients who received a sham adjustment, which is a pretend adjustment. So they still had hands laid on them. There was just no line of drive correction of a vertebrae. And what they found was that the immune response from the people who got the adjustment was significantly higher than before treatment and significantly higher than the response from the control. So the people that got adjusted had the highest immune response. One more, study number three, the inflammatory cytokines. This is your inflammation measure of inflammation levels. This measured 64 subjects, they were asymptomatic. So that means they didn't have disease, they didn't have neck pain, they didn't have back pain. They were coming in to get chiropractic adjustments for this. They're coming in for wellness. They're coming in because their spine and their nervous system controls everything else. They didn't have any symptoms. So they measured them before, they measured them at 20 minutes, and they measured them at two hours post-adjustment. And what they found was that the people that weren't getting adjusted, they had a progressive increase in the synthesis of tumor necrosis factor alpha and IL-1 beta. Then the subjects getting adjusted, both of those cytokines decreased gradually. So in the two groups, the control and the sham adjustment, they gradually increased, and in the adjustments, they gradually decreased. There's many more studies like this showing the effect of chiropractic in the immune system, but the number one thing that I would say with all these things, with these top 10 things, is that if you took 1,000 people and you said, you know, who here gets adjusted? And they raised their hand, and they said, who here exercises? And they kept their hands up, and they said, who here uh, gets their lymph moving? Who here eats a healthy diet? Who here does these top 10 action steps? Then you compare that to how often somebody gets a cold, a flu, a fever, and it's gonna have a direct correlation. It's not one thing, go home today and eat some broccoli and your immune system's gonna be boosted. It's do all these things, and not do them when you're sick, do them today, do them tomorrow, do them the next day so that you don't get sick. Thank you for listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.